what I try to do in all of my teaching is target my teaching, the techniques and the activities that I use to the particular student audience that I'm working with. And in my case, the undergraduates that I work with are all future teachers, both elementary teachers and uh, prospective high school teachers too. So with that in mind, I'm trying to come up with a teaching approaches and teaching activities, learning activities, that not only will help the students learn while they're here on campus, but a bigger goal is to uh, give them some examples of things that they can take into their own classrooms in the future. And by doing that, I think I can make what I'm doing more enjoyable for them. I think I can make it more relevant for them. And I think I can make it more useful for them too. I teach two biology classes for elementary education majors. And um, in those activities, we try to make it more enjoyable for them by, first of all, um, switching the traditional proportion of lecture time and lab time. Typically in a lot of science classes, there's a heavier or an equal emphasis on lecture as there is on the laboratory. In our case, we have completely flipped that and we are doing four hours a week in the lab and one hour a week in lecture. And for a couple of reasons, I think that's really appropriate for these students. First of all, they are future teachers. And so I think if we can model for them some good ways to teach science, especially with the hands-on approaches like in the laboratory, then even though this isn't a teaching methods class, I think we're doing a good job of showing them some ways that they might think about uh, teaching science in their classroom in the future. We try to make the topics that we're teaching relevant for them in a couple of ways. First of all, all of the uh, content that we cover in our two biology courses is directly correlated to the topics that elementary teachers will teach in their classrooms in the future. So the biology content that we're uh, focusing on is mirrored in, for example, the Indiana State Science Standards. And in our lab packet that we give to them, every one of the lab activities has the relevant Indiana Science Standards listed as well. And then we also try to make uh, the teaching and the learning useful for them because, of course, we want them to be teaching science in the future, but one of the ways that we can do that is to incorporate lab activities that, while it helps them understand the biology content better, it's also something that with a few tweaks, they'd be able to use in their own classroom in the future. So, for example, we do an activity on the human digestive system, and we have the students build a life-size model of the human digestive system using household items such as a funnel, pantyhose, a vacuum cleaner hose, a cake decorator, and things like that. Um, and it's to help them enjoy the learning because I think that's a way that that content can be more enjoyable for them. But it's also a way that they can realize, you know, I could do something like this in my classroom in the future too. And I think we're being successful with this approach. Um, and one of the real tangible ways that I, I measure the success is by the number of uh, former students who are now full-time teachers uh, who contact me on a regular basis and say, I remember we did this activity in the biology classes that I took on campus. Could you send me a copy of that lab activity? Because I want to be using this in my own classroom now. And to me, that's a signal that we've picked some appropriate content, so it has correlated with what they hope to be doing in their own classroom, that we picked an approach that not only was it effective for them as a learner, but now they're seeing that it's effective for them as a teacher. And it's something that they have figured out, you know, I did it at the university as a student, but now I can make some adjustments and do it here in my own classroom too.